Hello, everybody, and welcome to Schneider's Innovation Talks. We're here today to talk to you about ways to pursue sustainability at home. I'm Liz Kelsey, and I lead residential marketing for North America here at Schneider Electric, and I'll be your host. I'm accompanied by Spencer Fields from Energy Sage, and Spencer leads the Insights Division, which focuses on market intelligence and consumer research. Now, if you haven't heard of Energy Sage, you're in for a real treat. Energy Sage is the premier go-to platform for homeowners to research sustainable solutions and navigate home electrification. Um, so Schneider, please tell me that. <laughs> Spencer, please tell us more. Thanks so much, Liz. Hey, everybody. My name is Spencer Fields from Energy Sage. I'm very excited to be here and to join you all today. Uh, like Liz mentioned, Energy Sage is the country's largest online marketplace for renewable energy comparison shopping. So what that means is we provide educational resources and tools to people who are interested in learning about their renewable energy options. And then when they're ready to move from being researchers to shoppers, we provide an online platform to do just that. So we got our start with residential rooftop solar. We gather custom quotes for your home from contractors in your area that you can compare all online. We moved into solar plus storage, community solar, non-residential solar plus storage, and we just launched a heat pump marketplace recently, which is very cool and uh, looking forward to, to continuing to expand that. So I'm excited to be here. Awesome. All right. Well, let's start with level setting on home electrification, uh, something that not everybody may be familiar with. So the goal of home electrification is to transition from fossil fuels to cleaner, more sustainable electricity sources. Um, and it's important because what it's really doing is it's giving us a major step to a sustainable future. Um, so it's obvious we've seen people trending more and more away from fossil fuels to cleaner, more sustainable energy sources. And this is only gonna continue as people learn more and understand more about how our energy use really impacts the environment and our climate. And also as they learn more about some of the government incentives that help people more easily afford sustainable and efficient upgrades to their homes. Um, so you're probably also wondering, well, why is home electrification beneficial? And there are a few reasons why. First, you know, it reduces our carbon emissions, which we know reduces our impact on the environment. Second of all, by transitioning us away from fossil fuels, we become more energy independent. And finally, it really does help us save on our energy costs. Now, Spencer here has done a lot of research on this topic. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's exactly, exactly right, Liz. So, home electrification is a incredibly complex, or can be an incredibly complex process. It involves a number of products and services that are new to most homeowners. And so we at Energy Sage get asked reasonably regularly, how do, I, how do I navigate this path? What order should I purchase these products in? How do I electrify my home? And so in order to be better able to provide advice and answer that question when we're asked it, we actually turned around and posed that question to a nationwide panel of consumers and some research that we completed towards the end of last year. And we asked those consumers across all these electrification products and services, what order have you adopted them or do you plan to adopt them? We found in our research that there are four main entry points into the electrification process and the clean energy journey for individual homeowners. The first one is through your wall with a smart thermostat. The second one is through your garage with an electric vehicle. The third one is through your roof with solar panels. And the fourth one is what I'm calling through your windows with energy efficiency audits and upgrades. I want to touch on those first two entry points really briefly and provide some color for why they're so important. So over a fifth of consumers say that the entry point for them into their electrification journey is with a smart thermostat. And you may be thinking smart thermostats are a pretty small piece of technology, maybe an insignificant part of the electrification journey, but our research found that that's actually not the case. 91% of people who begin their journey with a smart thermostat continue on to adopt additional electrification products and services. So then you can think of smart thermostats as basically a gateway product for the clean energy journey for into the home. Uh, they're reasonably inexpensive, they're reasonably unobtrusive, 
They're pretty easy to install and they provide just enough insights of bill savings to pe keep people coming back for more and uh, e more products. The second main entry point that I want to touch on briefly is through the garage with an electric vehicle. So what's interesting about an electric vehicle is that there's a very clear follow on purchase, an EV charger, a level two EV charger, potentially even uh, the one that Schneider just launched uh, a couple days ago here at CES. But it's not just an EV charger that EV adopters move on to after purchasing an electric vehicle. 50% of people who begin their clean energy journey with an electric vehicle purchase solar as either the second or the third step. And that makes sense because when you buy an EV, you want to reduce what you're spending at the pump and you want to make sure that you're being more environmentally sustainable. You don't want to just replace what you were paying at the pump with an increased electric bill and you don't want to just replace filling your tank with gas with filling your tank with whatever electrons the grid is sending to you. So solar helps uh, answer answer both of those questions and is the logical next step as well. Right, right. That makes complete sense. So really, if people, people start often with something very small, but that gets them to continue to the majority. And often, as you can see with EV and solar, those purchases become much, much more significant. So, you know, as you ended on solar, let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. What, what's, what are you seeing in your research as the driving factor for people? Yeah, absolutely. So it should come as no surprise, or at least I hope it comes as no surprise, that the primary driver of interest in and adoption of solar is to save money. Personally, I have solar panels on my rooftop. I have not paid an electric bill since August of 2019. And every month when I get an electric bill from my utility that says zero dollars, it is the most wonderful feeling. I cannot recommend it highly enough. What, what we found though that's, that's interesting is it makes sense that the primary driver of adoption of solar is to save money. But when we ask consumers about all these other electrification products, EVs, storage, heat pumps, Cost is a primary driver of interest in each of those products across the board. So when we completed our consumer research, we asked people, why are you interested in these products? If you've purchased it, what was the primary driver of adoption? And if you hadn't purchased it yet, what was the primary barrier? Cost is the answer across the board. So primary driver of interest in all four of those technologies, solar, storage, EVs, heat pumps, to save money primary driver of adoption across all those four categories to save money with the notable exception of energy storage where it's was the least. Primary barrier to adoption across all four of these categories. Cost or at a, at a minimum perceived cost. So either it's uh, too expensive, I don't believe I can afford it, it's more expensive than I thought it would be, or I don't think the investment is worth it. So that to me says that there's, there's sort of one or two things at play. It could be that there's still a cost gap and we need to continue to make these products more affordable so that they're more accessible. But the other piece of it is that there's an education gap as well. We need to continue to talk about the ways that people can pay for these products, the incentives that are available to them, and also the ways that they're gonna help them save money. Right, right, exactly. Um, you know, when we're looking at costs being both a, a driver and a deterrent, how, what can we do to address that issue of it being a deterrent for folks? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we got our start in solar, so that's the easiest one for me to talk about. To the extent that cost continues to be a barrier to entry and a barrier to adoption for people in the solar industry, we as an industry need to continue to focus on that and find ways to address that. What I will say is that over the last two decades, the cost of solar has come down markedly. So we always talk about the cost of solar in terms of dollars per square foot. That's our sort of comparison metric that we used per dollars per square foot. Dollars per watt, I got ahead of myself. We compare it to dollars per square foot when you're thinking about a home or, or, or renting an apartment. We use dollars per, per watt as that comparison metric in solar. 20 years ago, solar cost $11 per watt. In 2010, it was $6.20 a watt. Since 2019 on Energy Sage, it's been under $3 a watt in the quotes that are provided by real contractors to real homeowners on our platform. So we've seen the cost of solar be cut in half twice over 20 years, which is incredible. At the same time though, a $30,000 investment is a, is a major investment. And I think as an industry, we sort of said, don't look at this upfront cost, but instead let's think about it as a bill replacement and your finance your system 
you'll find a way to sort of stomach the cost on a monthly basis as opposed to what this big upfront cost is. But there are a couple of ways to reframe the discussion around the 20, 25, 30 year savings from solar panels. One of those ways, and this is not a novel or unique approach, plenty of people are doing this already, but I think it's important to, to point out. One of the ways to do that is to say, if you spend $100 on electricity per month right now, over the next 20 years, you're gonna spend $35,000 on electricity alone. Now all of a sudden, if you can offset all of that with a $20,000 solar panel system, that upfront cost is still a pretty big thing to stomach, but it's, it's much easier to stomach when you do know that you're going to see that many savings over the lifetime of the panels. The other way to think about it is that it's not just bill savings that you're seeing savings benefits from solar with. Zillow ran a study a couple of years ago that found that homes with solar panels on them sell for 4% more than homes that don't have solar panels on them. So on the median value of a standalone single family home in the US of three or $50,000, 4% is 14 grand. That's most of the cost of the solar right there. Uh, and so even if you're only staying in your home for three, five years after adopting solar, you're still gonna see a financial benefit from doing so. And that's all before we've even begun to talk about incentives. Right, right. And that's what I was going to get to because, you know, looking at what you're going to say over time is important, but a lot of people really struggle with that initial investment. I, I certainly balked at it when I put solar on, on my home. So the Inflation Reduction Act that right. was recently passed in August of last year, as many of you may know, and it includes incentives uh, and rebates for bringing sustainability and energy efficiency upgrades to your home. And so that's where you're going to tell us a little bit more about how that makes solar more affordable. That's exactly right, Liz. So the Inflation Reduction Act passed in August of 2022. It is the largest single investment that the U.S. has ever made on climate change, clean energy. It's remarkable. It's $369 billion in clean energy infrastructure incentives, rebates, tax credits. It provides incentives, rebates, tax credits, all sorts of uh, monetary benefits for procuring all sorts of home electrification products from solar to energy storage, to electric vehicles, to the smart electric panels, to heat pumps, to energy efficiency. I'm naming a lot of products because there are a lot of incentives included in this bill. Um, With solar in particular, and storage in particular, what the Inflation Reduction Act did is it extended the investment tax credit, which has always been the best incentive for residential solar. It's a 30% tax credit. So it's not a deduction on your taxes, it's an actual credit. So if you spend $20,000 on a new solar panel system tomorrow, when you file your taxes for this year, you'll get a $6,000 credit back. So that's exactly on the amount that you, on the amount that you owe. So um, it's, a, it's a really wonderful tax credit and it really makes solar and residential energy storage much more affordable. But here's the thing, when we surveyed consumers, and we asked them if they were familiar with the clean energy incentives included in that in the Inflation Reduction Act. Only 56% of consumers said that they were aware of those clean energy incentives. And that's important because the people who are aware of them are more interested in this technology and they've accelerated their timeline for adopting them. So this is another education gap and another opportunity for us to try to make sure that those 44% of people who are unaware of the IRA and the clean energy incentives included in it are brought along for the, uh, the, the electrification journey and ride beat the rest of the country. Yep, yep, that's right. And folks, we actually have another session that will really dig into the details of the IRA and, and how whole borders could really benefit from that. Um, so tell us what else you, your research has uncovered. Yeah, absolutely. So we ran this consumer research towards the end of last year, uh, focusing on a number of different aspects of the consumer journey, the decision-making process around these major home investments, and all of the data that we found, analyzed, we've published for free to download on energysage.com. So go, go over to our website after this and check it out. Uh, but there's, there's just one or two more data points that I wanna talk about right now. Um, one of the things that we were curious about is with these big ticket item home investments, where do people turn for decision-making support. So on a standard big ticket item investment, a non-clean energy one, 70% of consumers say that they turn to their friends, their family, their neighbors, their coworkers. So a trusted confidant for uh, unbiased uh, advice. 
When we asked that same question to people who were purchasing solar, only 40% of people were relying on their friends, family, coworkers, and neighbors. Instead, they were turning to their contractors, to their solar contractors. And so, again, this is sort of the theme of this conversation is that there is an opportunity to provide that unbiased, trusted resource uh, of advice for how to navigate these paths to electrification. Certainly, we're trying to do that at Energisaid. And another piece of it is to try to reduce the complexity involved in the electrification journey. And I know that that's one of the promises of the Schneider Smart Home Office. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, Schrader has a, a legacy of being a leader in home electrification and, and trustify electricians for generations and a factory of four out of 10 homes in the U.S. Uh, our newest solution, Schneider Home, which you can all check out the booth and also online at schneiderhome.com, uh, really helps to address just what Spencer was talking about, that, that complicated, disparate journey. And, you know, there are all different kinds of parts and pieces from, you know, an EV charger to a battery to your solar inverter. They're all from different vendors. They don't talk to each other. You've got to have a handful of apps. And not to mention, it does not really look great on the side of your home to have all kinds of boxes and old conduit and whatnot. So with Schneider Home, what we looked to do was to simplify that journey for consumers. We, we did a lot of interviews and we just looked into what are the, the friction points for consumers. And that, again, it means everything from their EV to your solar and water to your battery to the solar electrical panel, which is really the heart of all of it. And what we came up with was a system that held all of that together from the hardware side and we created one easy to use intuitive app that, that controls it all. So um, that's that's really what we're looking to do. And we work with Energy Sage, of course, to make that end to end solution look simpler for patient words, all the way from research and product selection through installation and commissioning with it and, and, and use. Um, so the other thing is that this system, it's scalable and modular. So you can start with just one little step. You don't have to go into the whole entire system. For me, I'm looking at an EV, so the EV charger would be my first step. And, you know, that might mean getting an upgrade to my panel so that I don't have to have a service upgrade. So then maybe I go and use the, the, the boost, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, the pulse panel. So please do check it out. Um, and also make sure you check out all the great resources on home electrification and renewables at Emergesage.com. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Thank you.